Tyler, you're live on Truth Wanted. What's up? Hey, how are y'all doing? Doing okay, Tyler. Doing yeah. okay. Just had a very intense call, but I think um, a good conversation. A uh, very good one. So so what do you got for us, Tyler? Oh, that's good. I mean, I don't know about the, the angel prompt I saw, but uh, I was just calling in to talk about how the Christian worldview or just um, the Christian belief uh, is a rational belief that people could have based on evidence they get from the universe about people's relationships, humans, and stuff like that. So I don't know if that's too vague of a question, but or a position. Well, no, I no, I think so. I I would want to start the conversation by asking you, what do you mean by a Christian worldview? What does that entail? What premises does that include? Yeah, so I think. Uh, for me, at least, at least, and I think this holds for a lot of Protestant Christians, uh, a God who is absolute, who created the universe, and it's the omniscient, omnipresent, uh, omnipotent God, who is just the definition of justice and reason and stuff like that, right? So, based on that if you look in our world right now, even if you don't presuppose that, that God exists, you can pick out certain things that make it reasonable to believe in. Oh, so it's almost empirical. Like you can find God through op like worldly observation. Is that right? Yeah, I'd say so. Okay, that's interesting. It's very interesting. Johnny, you look like you want to jump right in. Yeah, I do. So this God is the, is the definition of justice or the, the paragon of justice? What was the phrase you used when you said about justice, this God? Yeah, uh, I don't quite remember. I think I probably said definition of justice. The, the fact that right. he is just, right? It's like perfectly just. He is just. Perfectly just. Okay. Do you believe in hell? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so do you believe that uh, any individual who commits a finite crime deserves infinite punishment for the rest of time. I would say no, if you don't okay. posit a God. Does that make sense? No, if it you doesn't. don't please posit explain. a God, but if you do, yeah, if you so do posit a God, it does. Yeah, please, please do. Sounds like youth are flow. Yeah, I youth think the logic holds. Here, but yeah, go ahead. I want, I want to hear it, please. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I would say the logic holds that if you grant that there is a God, right, who's all-powerful, um, and he gives mankind instructions uh, and tells him not to sin, right, then it logically holds that by them sinning, they deserve punishment because they yeah, did something dude, that I'm was not, wrong yeah dude i'm not just saying like well if well if you if you if you do something uh you steal something then you will be deprived for the same amount of time or you will get a smack on the hand or you will experience the pain of being deprived of something that's important to you i'm saying you commit a a crime that god deems is uh wrong and then now this, not just all powerful God, but an all good God will now punish you for the rest of fucking history, the rest of all infinity time, no end, no, no chance to stop. You will burn and you will writhe and you will scream and you will cry and you will beg and you will be toasted and your flesh will flake off and always grow back because you did something finite. There is, if you posit a God that's all good, hell can't exist, mm -hmm. right, Tyler? I'm sorry, was your question, why would that make sense? Or that hell how does that make, How does that make sense? How does an all good God allow a hell to exist as it's been described by the holy books? I think I think it has to exist, right? If 
if the end game is for all of us to be with him, because that's when right we're free from this earthly realm and we're able to experience life with God, which is the ultimate goal, right? Then the only time that we can be with him is if we're also perfect and clean, right? Is that if we have no sin or trespasses against him. And the problem is through our own free will, we've chosen to that go against God. And so because God's the definition of perfection, if you do something that's not perfect, then you can never achieve perfection, right? So you're ultimately doomed, which would mean that we're all doomed, right? Because you can't go a single, no one can go a single day believer or unbeliever, right? Without doing something wrong, if you believe that there's a God who's the definition of good and just. Yeah. But that's where the resurrection comes in, and that's where the logic continues to hold up. At least in my opinion. I don't know if I... Tyler, how? Well, Tyler, how, though? I mean, honestly speaking, if God created the mm -hmm. universe and God can see through all of time, sees beyond time, sets up the universe in such mm -hmm. a way so that everything that happens is not a surprise to God. In fact, if I snap mm -hmm. my fingers just then, God saw, right, in, in your worldview, God knew that in... Uh, you know, at, yeah. at 8.32 p.m. Central Time on July 22nd, 2022, that Johnny P. Angel was going to snap his fingers while making an argument to Tyler, right? That's not a surprise. So, so too, God knew that, uh, you know, my friend Martin would be attracted and may engage in homosexual sex and love, right, with somebody that he cares about. Therefore, when God created the mm -hmm. universe, God knew that Martin was going to go ahead and do that, right? And allowed yeah. that to happen. So God also knew that Martin would be presented with a certain amount of evidence of God's existence, of the nature of substitutional atonement, of uh, you know whatever other whatever other facts that exist in my friend's mind and and, and psyche, right? and yet mm -hmm. allowed that universe to take place, didn't fine tune that universe so that Martin wouldn't come to hear what I think is actually terrible evidence for a, for a, a hidden God with logical contradictions. And yet that all loving God would, <clears throat> according to some sects of Christianity, send Martin to a burning hell for all of time not 10 years not 20 not a thousand not a billion all time whereas he could have created the universe some other way such that there was no such thing as uh as homosexual love and if you're gonna mm -hmm. say yeah but then free will what about um you know what 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 is thy response to that before I even get into the concept of free will? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, so with the with the whole issue of God knowing everything, even in the future, and it, it feels like that we're doomed to make these mistakes. Yeah, you're right. I would go to free will because I think that's the unfortunate fact of free will that with you need free will in order to be able to choose between good or evil right and so if there was right. no free will then we could never show our love to god well, let's, let's talk about this though we let's talk about this though. Yeah. Hmm? tyler yeah. when it comes to free will right F free will yep. and in the, and this interpretation is to either follow what god commands of us or not right like that's we have we have the option to do that right but if we don't know what god's commandments are that would kind of complicate things right so like the reason why i bring this up is because earlier and i want to ask you about this is you your application of justice which you consider to be just if if i understand you correctly please correct me if i'm wrong mm -hmm. is that if if human beings are given a universal law as you described then we have the choice to follow that law or not but but before australia was colonized by the british and the First Nations people were there, did they have the option to follow the commandments of the Abrahamic God before the natives of really any 
part of the world were living out their lives before Christianity came upon there. What choice did they have to follow mm -hmm. the instructions of a God of the Christian God? How could they enact yeah. their free yeah. will on something that they couldn't even understand that they were acting upon? That's a good question. I think, I think the best way to answer that would be to try to understand what like warrants belief or like what, what's a satisfying answer for God to condemn you to either hell or heaven. If you, yeah, if you, you're like an Aboriginal, right. And you may have never heard of God. It doesn't seem fair that if you haven't heard of Christianity, he would just send you down to hell because you're ignorant. But I don't think that's the right stance to take if you're a believer, because I mean, I can't find the verse in the Bible. I apologize. I can email y'all after the fact, but sure. besides your judgment based on the evidence he provides to you. So I personally don't want to believe in a God that doesn't give you any evidence and condemns you for not even knowing. And I don't okay. think that's the God of the Christian Bible. Okay, so what evidence did the First sense, Nations right? people fair. have? What evidence did they have then? I don't... Yeah, I don't know. It could just be... I mean, if we're trying to think of an answer, it legitimately could just be like the vastness of the universe or the connectedness of nature or something like that that would lead them to believe in some higher power outside themselves. Is that sufficient evidence for their belief, given what God gave to them? I don't no, know. I, I, There's I don't a belief that in I... a higher power. Hold on, Johnny. I want to finish yeah. this. You'd There's mean? a belief in a higher yeah. power necessitate your inclinations towards right or wrong. Does it necessarily, and let me, let me rephrase it for you, Tyler. Does it necessarily follow mm -hmm. that a belief in a higher power is going to determine your actions uh, morally speaking? Because I would argue no, right? We could have a belief in a higher power that does not give a single shit about what we do here on earth, right? So this yeah, idea mm -hmm. like that, that a native person could have a vague spiritual notion of a God or a higher power. And because of that, that is going to determine whether they go to hell for all of eternity or go to heaven. That doesn't seem to make sense to me. No, I'd agree. I think the answer to that then is, is it belief in this higher power, right? So if it's a belief in a higher power that you believe inscribed and put a part of himself in each and every one of his creations. So they intrinsically would know, or I guess like instinctively could be able to understand right and wrong, right? But yeah. if they have an instinctual understanding of right and wrong, then we wouldn't even need to abdicate on the basis of Christian principles, right? Because I would argue that Christianity has very specific ideas of what's right and wrong that do not match other cultures' understanding of what is right and wrong. I, I believe that there is a disconnect, and I and I and I even further believe that if you ask the holiest men out of any tribe in the world, ask them what they believe right and wrong is, I imagine uh, on paper it's going to be very different from what the God of the Bible mm -hmm. specifically describes to be right and wrong. I mean, would I, would I be fair in that assessment, Tyler? No, I think you absolutely would. I, I think that yeah. agrees with a lot. Yeah. So it's hard for me to wrap my head around justice in that sense, at least this Christian idea of justice, to base yeah. someone on a system that they not not only do not have knowledge of. Sorry, John, I'll let you I'll let you come in here. You're good, Dan. Um, not only that they don't have knowledge of, uh, but they can't they, they can't understand to be out there. But, you know, it's, it's very Kafka esque. Right. It's like there is this complicated judicial yeah. system of right and wrong that you can uh, that you have eternal consequences for and you don't even know that it's even out there fully right yeah. i don't think a vague spiritual notion of the beyond covers that i'm sorry johnny go ahead no and tyler here's another one and, and i do i do have been enjoying this conversation I, I would love to have you call the show again and continue this call with dan and um when i'm not here but um let's let me posit a, a hypothetical here Let's say you've got yourself, uh, you've got yourself an Adolf Hitler, motivated by hate and racism and all kinds of nasty things. 
let's say this Adolf Hitler is yeah. also a misogynist and he thinks that women are second class mm -hmm. citizens. Let's say he's also a, a bigot in other ways. Leave it at that. Let's say he also kicks dogs. Let's say he also uh, does all kinds of other terrible things to people on a small scale. Um, is it your belief that if he comes to find Christ at the very end of his life, as he's facing the, uh, the uh, inglorious bastards universe where uh, they're going to shoot him up with mm -hmm. it with a Tommy gun. And he's like, I accept <laughs> you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I was wrong. He goes to heaven and he gets to live forever. Whereas Anne Frank, who never came to understand Christ as her Lord and personal savior, burns forever in a fire for the rest of eternity with no hope of ever getting out because God set up this arbitrary set of tests to filter souls that he could have created differently if he just didn't make them so dependent upon physical material matter and uh, give them the ability to hurt each other. Is that perfect justice? Because if it is, perfect, perfect justice can go fuck itself. That's not what you mean, Tyler, right? You don't mean that, do you? No, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah. And I do have an answer, but in terms of like arbitrary principles, I think the way to go about that would be to say that if you do accept Jesus as the payment for you, then it would mean that you're covered for to go into heaven. Okay. Even okay, but did they, and, but, but Johnny just said, right? Anne Frank literally didn't do that. Yeah. So by that, by yeah. that understanding, you are telling me Anne Frank did not go to heaven. Yeah, well, I'd say so. To be logically consistent, without uh, without even trying to guess that to what Anne Frank's relationship with Christ was, if Christ did exist, she was a Jew. Hitler's she was a Jew, a little girl, or a little girl Jew who was killed by a bunch of purportedly Christian fascists in Germany, mm -hmm. 1930s, 40s, okay? She never accepted Christ as her Lord and personal savior. She was a little Jewish girl who got butchered by people who, who had little belt buckles that say, Gott mit uns, God is with us. Mm -hmm. They thought they were going to heaven. They thought they were going to Nazi heaven, and they killed Anne Frank. So in your worldview, if that's all true, like I just said, that's perfect justice. Tyler, you know better than that. You wouldn't be a Nazi. You wouldn't kill little Anne Frank. I know you wouldn't. So why are you making excuses? Why are you go so we're talking about like jumping through hoops earlier today in yoga? Why are you jumping mm -hmm. through these hoops to defend your gangster boss God? You're better than that. Your God is the worst piece of shit that's ever existed. If it existed. No, I'm not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not trying to make excuses for God. I'm just trying to say that it's logically consistent that because everyone who does not stay perfect according to like, the objective set of morals that God lays out that we may never fully understand because we're, you know, limited in capabilities. But in order, because we've all stepped away from that, if you do genuinely believe that Jesus died for your sins and covered that, then no matter what the disparity is, how much you've sinned, it would get covered. Now, when you get to the question of like really big bad men, like Hitler and stuff like that, it, intuitively it feels like that should not be allowed because it's just so awful to think about, right? And I don't know where like, the devil would come into play or if there's actually demons or stuff like that, right? But... Okay. Did, did God create well, demons God and devils? <laughs> Tyler, no, saying, like, if that... Tyler, are you in the Olympics? I, I think you're better than the God that you're trying to defend. I'm not saying that there might not be a r rules, right? This is the youth mm -hmm. fraud dilemma, yeah. okay? I'm not saying there aren't rules that are laid out somewhere, okay? I'm saying those rules are not perfectly just, or at least they clash with what I consider human centric human scale justice and if yeah that's what i'm concerned about is human scale justice i'm a human right and i got little room maybe even for animals yeah. and plants and the environment in there dan take it away please sorry 
Well, okay. So, so I, I want to talk about this at a different angle here, right, Tyler? Because we understand that there are people on earth, human beings who don't have the same cognitive capacities as us, right? Whether they need government assistance or assistance from their families, there, there's something about them that, that, you know, that they have to struggle to just get through life sometimes, right? There's people out there. And, and by that same token, I would argue, Tyler, and I don't know you, but I would, I'd be willing to bet mm-hmm. that you would not judge those people amongst the same standards that you would judge someone who is neurotypical because we have an understanding that they can't fully comprehend the complicated institutions and social rules that we've come up with um, to, to, for what we've deemed in our society to be right and wrong, right? Like, I think that's fair mm-hmm. to say. Yeah. If, if that's fair to say, right, how can God or how can we imagine a God who's so perfect and so beyond us, how could we be judged by that same standard? Because I would not judge anybody in my life who lacks a capacity to fully understand what their actions are doing and how they fit into mm-hmm. what I believe to be just. I, I can't judge them for that because I know they're not capable of that. And you are, and what I'm hearing from you is you fully admit that we aren't capable from that, that literally nobody is perfect and nobody can, can go mm-hmm. up to God's standards. So why on earth should we be judged the same? How does that make any sense? Well, I think he's judging us based on what he knows, right? And so if you believe in this kind of God, then you know that he knows everything about you, like your intentions and your, and all of that, right? So all the inflections or however you think that's not a problem for God to be able to judge perfectly. Does that make sense? Like we not sure. Hmm. Not sure if it does. I, I don't I think you I'm can acquit. Just, yeah. I don't think you can you litigate on somebody who doesn't fully understand. I mean, obviously our society does, right? We do have rules for people um, and and we do commit them to institutions, some would say unjustly, who cannot fully comprehend the the wrongness of their actions. That's a debate for another time. What I'm saying here is God in his perfectness has created an imperfect creation and has judged it by his perfect standards. I don't see how that's justice. If I had the ability to create a being that was conscious but did not have the same reasoning as I do, was not capable of that higher level, I would judge it based on the standards of where it's at, right? Like where it exists in life. I, mm-hmm. I would not base it on my regular standards because that yeah. doesn't make sense. It can't, can, it can't come yeah. to my standards. Can, you can know? I, can I, can What's I, up, can man? I intervene? I I've got that, a great example of oh, this. Yeah. Tyler, Go on. I've got a dog. He's popped up on different shows now and again. I'm not, he's sleeping. He's not going to come up. This is a perfect example. God is far, the God character is far more advanced than I am to, to for me than I am to my dog. Okay, my dog because of whatever conditions he grew up in, because he he wasn't socialized when he was a puppy before he got to me, because of his breeding, because of like some very basic conditions that that he deals with. And despite my best efforts, when he sees uh, another dog or a squirrel, quite honestly, he goes apeshit. He goes dog shit and he goes very aggressive. He barks and he lunges. I keep him away from other, from other animals. Okay. I don't judge him on my standards. Okay. I don't lock him up. I don't, um, I don't set him on fire. I don't, uh, put him in a terrible place for the rest of the day, for the rest of a minute or an hour at all. I understand that he's limited. And that he's operating with certain kinds of some limitations. He's a product of his environment. He's got limited actual actualization in his head. Okay. If I were your God, mm-hmm. when my dog lunged at another dog, I'd I'd somehow tra- try to find ways to transfer his consciousness into a machine a- 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 or into another dog. And I would kill the first dog, set it on fire, put his consciousness in another body burn him forever and all of time. If I did that, if I did that, Tyler, I would be, uh, the, what are the world, what of history's greatest monsters? And yet your God yeah. has pretty much done that with humanity, but you're cool with it because he gets to set the rules. 
well, I get to set the rules with my dog. So why don't I get to just do that to him? Right? What's going on? Yeah, I'd say, I'd say no. I think the, the problem here is that, yeah, there's a perfect God and there are these perfect rules, right? But in this world, it's, we're not the imperfect ones, right? God created us and with his own design in mind, but mm. allow free will, we were able to then choose which one, right? And it would be unfair if God then just doomed us all, right? Because he knew, he knows that we were all going to sin and it would immediately doom us all into hell. That, that would be completely unfair. And why would you create something you love that you're just going to completely doom? And so I think that's when he introduced Jesus into it as payment. And then you could say, well, you don't know Jesus, you're in the same situation, right? Which I would agree with because it's kind of messed up that's the case. But I don't think that's the case that we should take. Like, that's not the, the basis that God should judge people, whether they deserve eternal damnation or eternal salvation, right? It should be based on the amount of evidence that he gives to them so that the punishment fits how much evidence he exposed to you and then how much you rejected that. So well, either that's I an choose take. Right. I don't think yeah, that's ahead, how. Dan. Yeah. Well, we got to wrap things up. We really got to yeah. end things here. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, no, it's not your fault, Tyler. We we showed, we, we yeah. decided to go uh, over over time here on the show because we wanted to talk yeah. to you, and I'm glad that you got to talk to us, and I hope you understand our perspectives. What I I but we do need to wrap it up. I I guess what I would end it with here is, um, you know, if if it's a incremental system of justice as you've described, in other words, it applies to people who have of higher cognitive capacities, lower cognitive capacities, to their environmental factors. I mean, if all of those things are accounted for. It it seems like the conclusion is still the same, right? If it if if we are if we are working under the assumption that hell is a place of eternal torment, if we're working under the assumption that hell is an eternal place of torment, then it honestly doesn't matter. This incremental system of justice, what is it? The sentencing is still the same. If the sentencing is binary here, which is you either go to heaven or you go to hell, then then this sort mm-hmm. of incremental justice doesn't actually work. It's not really incremental. Because the crime doesn't really fit the punishment in that sense. But, um, and again, I, I, I'm doing the thing where I'm kind of talking and summarizing and put, and I'm letting you go. And I'm sorry about that. It's a bad habit and I, and I shouldn't do it. But we do have to wrap things up here. I, I guess I would just say, I would think about how you approach this idea of justice, Tyler. Because like I, I would not want to live in a world where that's true. Um, and I don't think it is true. I know that you do think it is. But I, I certainly would not. And I hope mm-hmm. I, I elucidated to that point. But anyway, I do I do got to let you go, Tyler. Thanks again. Thanks again for calling in. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, that's that's harsh. That's a harsh view of the world. But unfortunately, that's the view of the world that I understood to be true of as well. Um, and it does it doesn't it doesn't the pieces don't make sense. It doesn't really hold together. I mean, we already have a hard enough time as human beings keeping justice on each other yeah um but that to me doesn't sound like justice in any it sounds like the euthyphro dilemma dan i I know you're probably thinking about that too because god sets up these Mm -hmm. rules it's good but i think what tyler and all All due respect tyler that was a good good call i wish we could focus on i wish we could have done the whole you know a whole show just with you but um just because God says something is the rule sets these what seem like arbitrary rules sometimes doesn't mean Mm -hmm. that that's that really makes sense. You're giving them a special pass. So I would would recommend you read uh, the Euthyphro. It's something that comes up on a lot of our shows. It's a platonic dialogue. It's fairly short, Um, but also type in Euthyphro dilemma, AXP, talk even it pops up a lot and um, see where, see where we're seeing the problem. At least where I am. Yep. Yep. yep.